I think we're gonna need a bigger bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet. My son is still sleeping, so I'm trying to let him rest a little bit. But today we are going to make some bola, and I thought I'd start getting things ready here while he's still sleeping. Bola is a funny one. Um, there's so many different ways to make it. Like even I have two different recipes in a recipe book, plus all the recipes that I see online. And just like I mentioned in my Lattu recipe, uh, or Lattu uh, video, that you know a lot of the techniques get passed down just by personal preference from your grandmother or mother. And I wish I would have spent more time with my grandmother making pula and my mother, but uh, and just the way they made them. And uh, I did pick up a little bit here and there, mostly from eating them and the way they were made, but. Just like grandmother's coffee, I still have not been able to make bola as good as she has ever made. But the quest continues and I will continue to make bola until I can get it just as good. But that will likely never happen until my grandkids eat my bola. Is that a wink? <laughs> I can't wink. <laughs> so one thing I do like to do that's not in all of the recipes is scalding the milk that's uh heating the milk up to uh i think 170 degrees celsius and essentially what it does is it uh it kills off the enzymes which can hinder the uh, yeast uh, from doing its job and working properly but that's not as big of a deal to me as the fact that i think it changes the flavor of the milk well, when you heat it up to uh, that point it just tastes has a different taste to it. So I always like to uh, scald the milk and then cool it off before uh, making the bolo with it. It takes a little bit more time, but it makes it all that much better. So we don't have fresh yeast, but uh, so we're gonna use uh, dry yeast. And he's uh, just putting it into some water now to activate it. And we got the milk cooled down to a point where we could uh, bake with it, or at least mix the ingredients up in it. So we just have to add the yeast to the water, let it activate, then we're gonna add that to the milk and mix the rest of the ingredients together. Now this usually takes a lot of practice, but I'm gonna teach him how to crack an egg with one hand. So you put one finger across the middle like that. Thumb on this side, this finger around that side. So your thumb and your finger, after it cracks here, is gonna pull it apart, levering against the back of the bottom of this finger, right? So crack it and then pull apart, like that. Almost. Yeah, look at you! <laughs> mm, it's no, that's fine. But yeah, you broke the yolk. That's, that happens at the best of times. But still, good job. Once you get used to it, you'll never go back to cracking it with food. One secret to cooking, always gotta have a towel over your shoulder. <laughs> that might be, <laughs> that's a lot of yeast, I think. I'm doubling the recipe, so it just feels like a lot more. Around two teaspoons of salt. I'm a big fan of using extra cardamom. We're going to be looking at uh, five, five to six cups, and we're doubling that, so 10, 10 to 12 cups of flour all together. So let's keep count. 10 to 12? 10 to 12 cups of flour. I think we're gonna need a bigger bowl. <laughs> One, two, two cups. Ah, 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 ah. Three, three cups. 
The trickiest part that I haven't gotten used to yet with the flour is the fact that how much you actually use. I think with the loaves, you want the dough a little bit thicker, but then with the buns, you want it uh, just barely manageable. So you still want it sticky and elastic. 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 It's a word because we just used it. So that's almost ready to mix by hand. Maybe one more cup of flour. So one thing I was doing when I was when I was making bulla was I was melting the butter all together. Whereas I should have been uh, just using soft, really soft room temperature butter and mixing that in. <laughs> it's all about the butter. <laughs> I'll mix it into the dough. So then once you have a manageable dough, you can turn it out onto a flour board. We don't have a baking board, but let's scrape all that stuff out of there. I feel like I used too much butter. for a couple minutes and we're gonna get a bowl ready for to let it sit and rise in so you butter butter that so that it's not gonna stick to any of the sides as it rises up put it in the bowl make sure you get lots of butter on that side and flip it around so there's butter on the top of the dough as well now we're going to warm up the oven just for uh, just for a warmth to keep it warm so it rises really good. So the bulla is just rising in the oven, the dough is just rising in the oven right now. Now bar none, I think the best bulla in the world was always the ones my grandmother made. That I don't think we'll ever be able to be able to make the same, no matter what recipe we use. But there is so many different recipes, so many different techniques for making bulla that, you know, find one you like. Look up any of the hundreds of recipes online. Look up some uh, recipe books. You know, find the technique you like and you enjoy making. And that's what's, that's what's gonna be important in, uh, in your cooking. You know, it's, uh, it's, what, it's what you enjoy and what you enjoy with your family. And always remember, your pula will never be as good as your grandmother's was until you have grandkids then it'll be good again. So one habit I've gotten into as I cook is to always keep a little bit of water in the sink with some soap. And just when you have a couple minutes, clean up as you go. And I got this habit from my mother, not because she did it, but because she did the opposite. She would dirty every single, I, I love you, but <laughs> when she cooks, she uses every single dish in the kitchen and it was always mine or my sister's job to do the dishes and clean up afterwards and it was just chock full of dishes all the time and so waiting at the end like that it was just so much so i always like to try and clean up as i go so leaving a little bit of soapy water in the bottom of the sink and then when you have a half minute you know just wash up a couple of the dishes put them up in a rack to dry so when you're done cooking you don't have a colossal mess to clean up <laughs> i love you mom Okay, so the dough's had a chance to rise up. Yeah, it is fairly warm in there. So we're going to split this into three because we're going to make three different types of bolo. Oh. 
These ones that I like to make, you cut them in strips, twist them, and the longer longer it is, the easier it's going to be to tie. So after it's twisted, then tie it and push the end in underneath, making a little knot. So now once we have all the polos and buns formed, then we let them rise again before breaking. So we'll put them, put them back in a, in a warm oven. It's about 50 degrees in there. Now we'll make another batch of the Korva uh, Poistu. I have to look that up, so we'll try that one next. I called my aunt to get some tips on uh, some tricks for pola, and she was saying to uh, sprinkle some vanilla on there as well, and it turns out really good, so we're going to try that with these. So with this one, instead of folding it, we're going to roll it up. So once you get it started, it's a little easier to do, but I'm going to get it rolled nice and tight so there's not any loose air pockets in there. And this edge, you want to Thin it out a little bit. So it seals nice and good there. So then these ones, we just cut them on angles like that. That's it. Then you take, take that, put it down. And just press with your fingers in the middle, like so. Now you beat some eggs to uh, put on top of the bulla before you bake them. And for some reason, I always remember my, my grandmother, she always put a little bit of coffee in with the eggs that she uh, put on top. And put a little bit of sugar on top of each one. And sometimes maybe a little added cardamom on top as well, just for kicks. So these ones are going to be the braids, so we're going to make two loaves, so six pieces. Let's 
see how this is going to be thin. So this is how it's thick, this is thin, so when you roll them, don't push down here anymore because that's already too thin. Bring it out this way. actually smell the vanilla in these. I'm curious what it's going to taste like. And same deal with the loaves. You know, lots of lots of egg on top before you put them in the oven. Sprinkle some sugar on there. That was always my favorite part when I was a kid. Eating my grandmother's bowl, I'd always, I'd always take the top off and eat the top first. Twisted buns. Twelve buns. Leftover bun, braided loaves, and one for the dog. She loves bulla. So that's not a bad haul of bulla for Christmas. Hopefully it lasts that long. <laughs> we only got a couple weeks uh, till Christmas, but you know, it uh, turned out pretty good. Three different kinds. Uh, some of it we're going to give away. Most of it we're going to eat, but uh, it always goes good with coffee in the morning. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. It only... Took a, took a few hours, you know, so we've been at this for maybe four hours, but that's a lot of time letting it sit and rise. So it's, uh, it's well worth it. But there's so many different ways that you could, you could cook this, and I'm sure everybody's got a different way to do it. Uh, I actually called my aunt. Uh, she, does, uh, she does a lot of baking with uh, the rest home back, uh, back home. So I just called her and asked her different, uh, you know, tips and tricks that they do. And that, that's where I got the idea for the vanilla. Uh, she told me to try sprinkling some vanilla on there. So I'm curious what that's going to taste like when uh, when we can try it out. But yeah, overall uh, a good haul. It's uh, it always uh, it's always nice to you know sit back with a coffee and some bola in the mornings. Tastes like home. Now this is a twist one that I usually make. The corba posto. Corba is here. I'm not sure what the other one is. I'm going to have to look it up, but I don't know it right now. And then slices from the uh, loaf. Actually. Nice warm bulla out of the oven with some butter on it. It's really good. The end piece is my favorite. Now the pan was super hot. These were the last ones we put in, so a little bit too crispy on the bottom, but. So these ones are the ones I normally make, but this time we use brown sugar instead of white sugar on the inside. Now this one I'm interested in with the uh, vanilla in it. What that tastes like. When I was a kid, I used to eat these. I used to unravel the meat, eat them one layer at a time. Which is easier to do once it's cooled off. <laughs> And the center part's a gold. Mmm. The vanilla, it's a nice, uh, nice flavor to it. Not too bad. So I think we got enough pull to last us, hopefully at least till Christmas. If not a little bit after. <laughs> Is that too much for you, that one? 
Thank you so much. I'm washing my belly now. Please save your rest for later. Yeah. 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 Yeah.